Hey there fellow minions of technology, my name is Tim Lee and welcome to Legacy Studio. In today's video we're doing a uh, another review, believe it or not, of something from Spitfire Audio. Uh, I just reviewed the strings, uh, the epic strings uh, from Spitfire Audio and I absolutely love them. I can't get enough of them. Uh, and for 30 bucks you get so much with the epic strings, uh, I was immediately impressed. So I got an email uh, like yesterday or day before yesterday saying that the new um, the new one has come out. Let me go find it here so I got the proper name here. This one is the uh, Epic Brass and Woodwinds. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta get it. Uh, and it was only 30 bucks, so if it's as good as Strings is, then I obviously have to have it. Uh, and, and the thing is, Spitfire Audio is known for amazing stuff I mean they have stuff that I mean runs 400 800 900 dollars to buy some of their sample packs but they're beautiful pieces of music that I desperately want to have uh, sound packs that would just uh, make my orchestra stuff so amazing but I can't afford it and so when you get stuff like this for 30 bucks they're wonderful teasers and what I call gateway drugs to albums like Albion one which I desperately want which I think right now is like 450 bucks somewhere around there. Dreaming big, I want it, but that's a lot of money for a guy who's not making any money making songs. Uh, now let me go ahead and say this before we start in today's review. Uh, I am not professionally trained in any form of music whatsoever. I absolutely love soundtrack though. I love soundtrack. Uh, I love those action films with the background music all behind it and stuff like that. I love that kind of stuff. I love Hans Zimmer's music. Um, when you guys were listening to Rock as Kids, I was listening to Yanni, and I loved Yanni because Yanni's stuff felt like a musical soundtrack to a movie or something where he mixed orchestra and I, am I going, okay, you get what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm, I love that kind of stuff. So when it came down to making music and writing music, I've really been inspired in the world of orchestra. And I bought Reason 11, which is the software we're looking at right here, because it, it came with something called Orchestra. And Orchestra, which I have right over here, comes with a bunch of different sounds that are supposed to be orchestra type pieces. And in my last video, I compared Orchestra's strings to uh, Spitfire Audio's original uh, epic strings and the difference was phenomenal and very exciting now i've made a lot of bunch of great music with the orchestra stuff if i'm smart i'm going to be playing some music below me right now to let you guys know that i do play a little bit of music and you can recognize that maybe i have some theory that i know how to write some kind of music uh but what i want to do today is i want to open up some brass stuff and some uh and also some woodwind stuff and quickly play for you what it sounds like coming from orchestra. And then I want to play the Spitfire audio for you and see if it's any different. Now here's the thing. <clears throat> My experience with, uh, with woodwinds and with um, brass is that every single one that I've ever played when it comes to synth synthetic instruments really feels cheap and fake to me. Uh, but I'm beginning to realize that that might actually be because even the real stuff sounds fake. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so what I want to do is I want to play just, I'm going to play some trumpet, I'm going to play some bassoons, um, and I'm thinking, uh, if anything else, maybe uh, an oboe, uh, a couple of these just to see about how they sound coming from the orchestra pack. And I've made a ton of great music with the orchestra pack. And then I want to go into that originals, epic brass, and woodwinds, and give that a test. And see, is it worth the $30 uh, that the string pack is obviously worth? Let's find out together, shall we? Let's go ahead and start with just playing some basic uh, notes here out of the um, trumpet from orchestra. Let me turn it up so you can hear it a little better. It sounds dull. It sounds like a synth. It sounds like it was created on some kind of a synth. There's not really any kind of action behind it. There's no... There's not really much uh, giving you an idea of uh, sound, like a, like breathing or pressing or anything in there. Uh, let me try it with the, the modulator reel. 
I mean, it's doing something there. But can you hear that? Wada 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 wada. Yeah, so I'm not impressed by that. Now, usually uh, I have used these instruments, and when I've needed to fix some of these issues, what I've done uh, is I've created an effect. So let me go ahead into my mixer here, uh, which is hiding behind my video here. So let me uh, move my video over, because, I mean, this is a teaching opportunity for you guys to learn how to use Reason 11 if you're inspired by getting the software. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come here, right-click on FX Return, create a send effect and I'm just gonna go ahead and put a reverb in here and a reverb that I do like to use that seem that I seem to like to use a lot is this colossal reverb so we'll go ahead and pop that in there and let's go ahead and turn on the uh, trumpet and make sure that that's turned on now we should have a different effect Kind of like it, but at the same time, it doesn't feel natural. Let's go ahead and switch over here now to the next one in my list. All right, so I got the bassoon pulled up now here. Remember, this is from the orchestra sound pack, so let's go ahead and play this. That's obviously a MIDI. I mean, that's, that's obviously uh, a synthetic because... I hear I hear a bit of phasing in there and I hear a wada 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 through it. That's not very If that's supposed to be a vibrato, it's not quite working. Let me try it with this. Oh, my mod wheel was up, so turning it off now. I feel like I'm hearing some kind of waning in there, but nothing that makes it makes it sound uh, uh human. I mean, it's kind of there, but it kind of isn't. Let's go ahead and turn on the uh, uh, the bassoon uh, with the sound effect with the colossal reverb. Better. Obviously better, because if I start actually going into a riff and actually start feeling something... All right. Anyway, we're not we're not here to play with this. Um, let's go ahead and switch over to the oboes now, uh, and hear how this sounds. Let's go up higher. And and it just it sounds so fake to me. Let me go ahead and turn on the um, reverbs. I think if you can learn to use the mod wheel correctly, it kind of helps so you can get that vibrato, but... I mean, that's not bad. It's not bad. It's a decent sounding uh, oboe. I would use that with my music. Uh, but I, I, but for the most part, I haven't used any kind of brass and woodwinds in my stuff because it all sounds so fake. Let's go ahead and 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 really try to put the epic uh, brass and woodwinds to the test here. Let me go ahead and select it here, and let's just open it up and see what's in it. So this is the usual user interface uh, that they also had with the epic strings. Uh, and you can see here they got a couple options. They got the expression control here, dynamic control here, uh, reverb. And you can also hit the middle button here and change reverb to release and tightness, which is a nice thing. I keep it on reverb myself because reverb gives more life to my work, in my opinion. Um, and I want, I'm not creating instruments using synths. I'm creating, I'm trying to fake real instruments using my computer. That's more what I'm attempting to do. So reverb is usually the quickest thing I go to. If I'm fine-tuning anything, it's going to be with the release and tightness and with some of these room settings. So let's go ahead here really quickly before we get moving forward here. I just want to go ahead and program in a couple of remote functions here. 
so I can control a couple of these variables with my uh, uh, with my mixer here. So I can go ahead and control these now with a control, uh, which is a nice little feature to have. Even though I have to program it per uh, system, uh, per instrument, which stinks, but that's probably because I just don't know what I'm doing. And then I'll go ahead and program this one. So now I have control of all three of these levels here on on this. Now we can go ahead and test this out. Um, for the moment, I'm going to floor everything. Let's go ahead and just bring the reverb back to 50% here. And this is the brass live. So if, uh, maybe if you're doing this on stage and you're wanting just a brass feature, this is going to be it. Here we go. Let me turn it up. I'm not I'm not comfortable with the controls. Now now let me just do, do this lightly here. I'm not even sure if you can hear that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead oh it's already all the way turned up. So here's the most gentle I can push on the keyboard. A little harder. And slam it. Now that sounds more realistic because it, it literally sounds like it literally sounds like the 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 push the force from the trumpets and from the the the, the, the trombones and whatever whatever else is bouncing off the timpanies and it's causing a reverberation and that's what it feels like when you hit the hard notes. Interesting. All right, you, you can hear kind of waning in there, here and there, uh, which is good. Which is good. I would think it's. I would think it's good. Uh, let's go ahead and boost up the reverb all the way. I'm really struggling with my keyboard here because it really doesn't quite feel what I'd want it to feel like. So let me see if I can make a change here. Uh, we're going to go shift velocity curve. We're going to tell it that I want zero and enter. Okay. Very mixed emotions on it, mainly because I I have used more strings in my stuff than I have you know this, and I've been saying that throughout this whole video. Let's go ahead and change it up here a little bit, uh, really quickly. Let me do a demonstration of the uh, the controls here, and let's see how it sounds that way. That's nice. Uh, let's move on to the next one here. So we, now we got brass longs. Let's go ahead and set this at 50%. We'll set our reverb at 50% as well and give this a go. That's not bad. All right, it's not reading any velocity, so let's go ahead and turn the velocities all the way up through the controls. So it's only reading the velocity through the keyboard right now. 
I mean, through the controls. So used to playing chords when this is probably a single note instrument. Okay, anyway. Uh, it's, it's definitely better than what I have in my system. Uh, let's keep going here. Here's some shorts. All right, we got velocity back now. Mixed emotions, mixed emotions. It's it's decent, but I feel like it's more quirky trying to play it on the keyboard. Unlike my strings, my epic strings, I can play them much easier uh, than I can these these uh, these brass. Let me try turning this down. I feel disconnected from it, but it's probably my lack of knowledge of how to utilize this. Um, now, woodwinds, I love woodwinds because I love mixing my woodwinds in with my strings. So let's hear how the woodwind sounds and see how realistic this is in comparison. I'll go ahead and bring everything to 50% here for the woodwinds, and let's give that a go. See, that's nice. Let me turn it up for you. Go down an octave. I love that. Love that. What I love about it is it's, it's it, it makes me want to use the 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 velocity to get that. I can control it, and then if I want more hit, just hit a little harder. Makes it more inquisitive. I love that. I love that. Excuse me. Wow, that goes low. Does it go lower? Nope, but I mean... What instrument goes that low? Is that like a bass bassoon or something? I like that. I like that. Let's floor the reverb here. Interesting. Interesting. Let's go ahead and uh, crank up the woodwinds to full on dynamic and expression. All right, a hit, and this may make my re recorder go crazy. Yep, I knew it would. Let me turn it down. Ooh, that's quite loud. I do like that though. The fact that it can do that is really nice. Let's go ahead and bring it down here a little lower and try some variable controls at the same time. Oh. 
I love that. To, to be honest, it, it reminds me of uh, Hans Zimmer and uh, the movie um, Interstellar. I love that. Love that. All right. Anyway, uh, that seems like a good test. Let's move on. Uh, now we go into the longs. Uh, let's go ahead and set these at about 75% for longs, just so I don't kill the recorder. <laughs> Let's just do one. Go up an octave. It almost sounds like a flute. Can I get some of that bas clarinet back or whatever if I pull this back? And I feel like the expression is hitting a little better. That's giving it back a little bit of that, that removing the air wind from the flute has a bit of a, uh, a, a, a whoosh to it where a clarinet and a bassoon and those, that family has a bit more of a poom, poom, poom. It didn't make any sense at all, did it? <laughs> it's totally cut off the room noise. Okay, I like that. I really actually do like that. I feel like I have a lot of control over it. It doesn't feel awkward like the brass does to me personally, but that's, like I said, because of my lack of knowledge on running brass. Let's go ahead and try the shorts now. This is, I love shorts because I feel like I can get power and oomph out of things. Let's see how it does with the woodwinds. Uh, let's go down an octave. Love that. Love that. That's quite low. Let's go up an octave. I like that. I do like that a lot. I like that. That's nice. I like that. That felt good. That feels good. Love how woodwinds just kind of get. You can go from. You can go from this deep anger, air, air, troll anger. You know, trolls walking through the forest of Mordor or whatever. To then, it's like hobbits trying to figure their stuff out. And then you go to the high end and. Like little finches playing around. I'm so sorry. That's cool. I mean, I like these effects. I think they sound good. Let's go ahead and try it with some expression and such. What is this? Do you hear the little high-pitched tweet at the top? Oh, I love that. It's like the person is just getting that last push of air out. I like that. I like that. Right there. Right there. Did you, did you hear that? It went away. I don't know why it went away. Right there. It's like, it's like, there's like a little tweet right on. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Interesting. I don't know if that's because it's like trying someone trying to blow over the top of their flute and it's not quite catching or something, but it's like a little pew sound effect. 
There it is. Interesting. Very interesting. I, I, so far, and then we're back to brass. That's all we have? Okay, this is very interesting. If we look here, we have three options for brass, three options for woodwinds, and that's literally all the selection you have. Mixed emotions about that, because let's do this here real quick. Let's go over into my pack of epic strings and open that up here real quick. Because the selection for epic strings is is very vast. And let me let me see. Nope, that's definitely not it. Let me switch over here. Oh, <laughs> my blow out the recorder there. Sorry about that. I love the string packs. But let's go ahead and open this up and look at the strings. Live, long, long consort, short, short ostinato, uh, uh, pizzicato, tons of options. And then, and then on adding on top of that, they have octaves. Now, obviously, a trumpet and, 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 and woodwinds and brass are not going to do the same thing that, that the strings are going to do. But I would have actually really liked some octave settings with the brass. And that's not included with the brass pack. Which, uh, now, now, here's the thing that I'm learning. If it's not included, there's probably a reason why. And, and, and if that's the case, then that's more my bad than theirs. Because this is literally recorded in a live sound stage. It's recorded at uh, Air London Studios. And these are real instruments that have been put to the test. And they've created this from real instruments, which makes me incredibly excited. Because if I'm not understanding that this doesn't sound realistic, it's because it does sound realistic, and I'm just an idiot, which anyone can say that about me. But on top of that, um, I, I just feel like it would be nice to have a couple extra settings. For the $30 that I spent for the string pack, uh, I am stunned by the string pack. I love it. I love the options that they have. It's incredible. This one feels lesser. There, there's a little bit less to the pack. That's just me, though. Uh, you guys may feel differently. You may be excited about it. And like I said, I don't have any training or experience to know how a brass is supposed to represent itself in a orchestra. Uh, listen to a ton of music where brass plays a role, and I love French horns in in instruments and thing in in orchestras and things like that. But I I haven't learned how they fit, where they're supposed to fit, you know, in the same way that I have with uh, strings. Woodwinds, the woodwinds of this sounds awesome. I love the woodwinds, but the the brass is throwing me off slightly, and and that that's a bit more confusing to me. And like I said, mainly my fault, probably most likely. Let me go ahead and wrap this up because in my last video, I demonstrated what the release, the tightness, and these features do. So just on the brass here, let's do that real quick. Let me go ahead and switch back over to my brass and woodwinds for originals. I mean, if I want something that's, 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 if I want something that's pushed and huh, out there, then obviously I can get that with this, which is nice. I also feel like it's slightly detuned and, and like on purpose, and I'm okay with that. Detuned is fine, uh, but. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at these settings here. I'm going to completely remove the reverb. Let's go ahead and obviously there's reverb there, even though it's been completely removed because they were recording a real on a real soundstage. I'm going to bring the release all the way up. Let's try it again. Okay, let's turn the release the other way and see what happens now. I feel like it cuts off quicker. Maybe. Now, it looks like tightness is not here right now. I don't think we can do anything with the tightness. So let's go ahead now and turn off room, turn on close or close. And nothing's happening, so we got to turn it up. Let's go full blast. This feels a lot more closer to you. Yeah, it feels like it's right on top of you. Um, and I'm hearing more of it out of my right ear than out of my left. I'm not sure why that is. But let's go ahead and turn off that and turn on distort. Now, distort says a, a full-on gritty signal used for adding some dirt, dirt into the mix. So let's floor it and give it a listen. 
That sounded like an electric guitar. Ooh, that's, that is really gritty. Let's bring it down to like 50%. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I also want to ask, where's the mute functions? Now, is that something that I control through my dynamics and through my expression here? Or is that something that they should add? Uh, and maybe they're not adding it because you can buy that in a larger pack for three, four hundred or whatever dollars. I mean, obviously, they don't want to sell the good stuff. And, and I'm not, uh, no judgment. I'm, I'm, if I was to market something and I want it to be a gateway drug to something else like Ambium, Albium 1, which I desperately want... Um, I would hold some things back, uh, and maybe that's what they're doing here, possibly. But I feel like I feel like a few things are missing. Uh, what about mutes? Trumpets have mutes, and you can put a mute in the trumpet, and it makes a whole different sound. Uh, what about when someone plays the trumpet and removes the mute as they're playing, and get that 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 sac that not saxophone, but that jazz kind of feeling? That's not really included in here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off the distort here again. Uh, and turn on the room and close and hear how this sounds. Wow. That's, let me, let me it got really quiet. Why is it so quiet? I feel like I did something because now it's all super quiet. Oh, sorry. I'm a doofus. All right, now it'll be louder. Scale wasn't high enough and it doesn't play up there. That's the highest it goes. Yeah, that's the highest it goes. Let's go down an octave. Oh, I do like that. I do like that. Turn off close. It does feel a tiny bit further away now. It feels right on top of you. So the close on the room definitely do help depending on what you're trying to get, but it's a very subtle change. And I like my stuff to feel like it's in a ginormous room. That's why I throw on the reverb. I like it to really fly away in the distance. Yeah. And then we'll go ahead and bring the release back up. It's like it going away a lot, a lot slower there. Let's take a look at tightness here and see if there's any options here to bring out that tightness. Right here now that we've opened up uh, the brass short, now we have a tightness, but we don't have the release. So let's go ahead and try it now. I gotta admit, I don't hear a difference. Let me turn this up. This cuts further into the note to make it tighter. It does reduce realism. Only applies to the short patches. Okay. I think I hear it. And off? Yeah, there's like a click in there on the second on when it's fully up. And, and it's really hard to explain. It's a very subtle thing, but I can hear it. Let me kill the reverb and see if that makes a difference. And we'll turn off the room and we'll turn on the close. I hear it, but it's such a subtle thing, uh, and that's the thing about some of these controls. They are so subtle that um, hard to say. So in saying that, I want to thank you so much for watching. I do hope that this has inspired you to check it out. Uh, you know, for 30 bucks, I, I say that this is great, especially for the woodwinds, 
but that's only because of me and my knowledge of, of woodwinds. I know how to use woodwinds with strings. I don't know how to use uh, brass nearly as well as I should. I'm going to be learning about that. Like I said, I'm not formally trained. I'm not selling music. Well, I do have my music on Spotify, on iTunes, and on all the different sources. You just look up Tim Lee Michael, um, and you'll find my stuff. But truth be told, uh, I don't make any money on it. It's just a fun little passion I do on the side. Um, I would uh, love for you to check my stuff out. Uh, thank you so much for leaving your comments down below and subscribing. Uh, and for making my channel, which is a tech review channel, even more interesting by showing me the interest that you have to learn more about music production, especially orchestral and soundtrack design. And like I said, I don't have any experience in it. I'm just enjoying it. And that's the truth. If you can learn to enjoy something and find a passion in something, we all need that. We all need that in our lives. Well, thank you so much for watching. God bless you guys. I'll see you next time right here on Legacy Studio Reviews, Legacy Studio Music, whatever this is. And uh, until next time, God bless. And uh, thank you so much for checking it out. Link is in the description below to go and check out uh, uh, Spitfire's stuff to go and get this uh, this pack specifically. Um, and my mi I have very mixed emotions about it, uh, and I'm, I'm blaming myself for my lack of knowledge on how to use um, the brass more so than them for not including things, you know? I feel like I probably need more knowledge on how to utilize this. But maybe you have more of a clue. Maybe you can leave comments down below to help us newbies. Uh, and then on top of that, certainly, just thank you so much for checking it out. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.